want to be here, neither do we. That's why we call it the obligatory. We talk about farts, food, mics, kids, $5,000 beds, girls, comedy, and Kermit's about all. Yeah, maybe the facts aren't right, but here's the obligatory podcast with Kermit and Mike. And we are back. Episode 54 of the Obligatory Podcast with Kermit and Mike. And this week we have a very special guest in the studio, a good friend of the show, probably the finest close-up magician performer I know. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Moreland's in the house with us. We love you. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, had a very uh, <clears throat> bittersweet week. Bittersweet, you say. Well, first and foremost, uh, happy belated birthday. I think, uh, oh, what, yeah. yesterday you hit the big... Uh, yeah, four zero. Four zero, that, man. That, that, that's where the whole bittersweet thing comes from. <laughs> oh, man. You remember when you used to go into Spencer's Gifts in the mall when you were a kid and you would see like the over-the-hill gag gifts in the back by the sex stuff and they always had like a... A walking cane with a mirror on the bottom, and so you could be, horn. yeah, a horn, so you could be a creepy old man that looked up women's skirts while you walked around, and it was always like, "Welcome to 40. I'm like, "Ha those sons of bitches!" <laughs> and now here I am at forty two, going, "No one bought me a cane on my fortieth. What the fuck?" One of those with the I don't logo. think in I don't think in today's PC culture you're even allowed to sell that anymore. What do you yeah. mean? How's that? Do you remember what it was? It was a cane, yeah. and it had the horn on it, and then it had the, the rear view mirror, and then it had a rear view mirror. But it was down at the bottom of the cane oh, was, was the it? rear view so looked that you could be dress. that creepy old man that looked up dresses and stuff. I didn't know that part. Yeah, see, your innocent mind totally passed <laughs> over that. And now with the PC culture, I'm sure that was the thing. They're like, we need to put an end to Harvey Weinstein. We need to get rid of Bill Cosby. And while we're at those canes at Spencer's have got to go, you know. <laughs> hey, look, nobody's had to buy those canes in a while because you women stopped wearing skirts decades ago. Okay. Well, so stop wearing skirts too? Jeez. I don't know. I, I was like, <laughs> women in pants run this country all right uh but back to you robbie so bittersweet man bittersweet yeah. how so well now I've, I've come to realize that i can't use one of those canes unless i'm an old guy so that's kind of sad you know but <laughs> yeah but you are you're 40 now and according to spencer's you are officially old yes yes yeah i'm, I'm not really feeling it though like, except for maybe in a few ways you know you, you you start to notice things when you hit 40 you're like okay maybe i've been neglecting this oh that little pain in my shoulder maybe that's something i should have been taking seriously <laughs> you fucking time. sneeze and you threw out your back <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. So you were 39 one day, you woke up 40 and you're like, I'm not feeling anything different. Yeah. Yeah, It's amazing. Did you do anything for your birthday? No, no. I, I, well, yeah. I mean, I went over to universal studios. Uh, so yeah, I went over there, uh, did a little bit of partying in city walk. That Mm -hmm. was about it. And then, uh, and then I did my shows. I, I I wasn't. That I, shit sounded horrible. I, I'm saying bittersweet, man. Like I wasn't really happy about turning forty. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. I went to Universal and hung I, out no, with, I didn't want to hang out with my friend. I hung out at Simpsons. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for those of you who uh, uh, my own misery, <laughs> I I think we had Robbie back on the show early on when we were doing. Uh, we were at the Improv one night. And we were just kind of letting people come in and hang out while we were still yeah, getting yeah, our yeah. feet and stuff. Uh, but for those of you who haven't listened to every episode, uh, I met Robbie. Years and years ago, Robbie is part of what was known as the Magic Estate, probably the finest collection of magicians and performers in Orlando. And it was a cool little, it was like picture if like instead of Professor X training mutants, he had just decided I'm going to open a house and keep magicians around all the time. And that's what this place was. It was just a nice, I I don't know. I want to say mansion almost because that's what it felt like. It was in it, right out here in Okoe. It was. It's a small mansion. And you walk in, and it's just a guy invited out to a party once over there, and you just walk in. And it was very uh, eyes eyes wide shut or whatever that movie. But with magicians. But with magicians, <laughs> it was awesome. And like you're just mulling around, eating hors d'oeuvres, and having a drink. And then somebody comes up and goes, "Do you mind if I do a magic trick?" I'm like, "Mind." This has been like, like a lot of guys are like, oh man, I would love to do an orgy. Me, it's always been like, dude, I wish I could go to a really nice mansion where people kept going, want to see another trick? Is, is it like magicians get together and they do like not, actually? Not, not just magicians, great magicians. Do they like, do like, dirty yeah. magic they, tricks? Uh, the, guy that, the guy that just won America's Got Talent, he would hang out there. With Shin. Him. Like he would come over and like we would all be changing. Oh, that Asian out. dude. Yeah, Shin Lim. Yeah. yeah. So what, did you guys do like dirty magic, kind of like how comedians talk? No, no. I do. People wore suits. They dressed to the nines, like man. They came out to the little parties else. we would have. And then it would be uh, like we had a bar area and we would set that up like a little close up stage. And people would come back there and do like close up magic, cards, coins. And the range mm-hmm. of talent uh, was from amateur all the way up to like really 
awesome magicians. I bet, I bet your magicians getting drunk and they're doing like really disgusting tricks. Like check out these doves and they come out of his penis and stuff like that. Like, no. You got to think more creative, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're so simplistic. Although your heart's in the <laughs> Wait, well, well, name one dirty magician joke. Oh, cause God. like Mike has like a shit load of dirty jokes. Well, we used to have one. We used to have one guy that would uh, like he would come up there and he'd be like, "Check this out!" And he would show his hands empty and he'd come down in front of his crotch and all of a sudden like a fake dick popped out. Like there was all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit that went over there. Like and, and then it would go back in and it was gone. Like <laughs> so, okay, so pretty much like comedians. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, yeah. it was you know there was all kinds of crazy stuff went down in there. That was just one of the gag things. Like you're talking about, we would we would all get hammered mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden we'd be doing stupid, just retarded magic. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but I met Robbie years ago over there, and uh, you know since then we've actually uh, we worked for a short time at uh, there was a magic shop at Universal Studios that I had worked for, for before Robbie worked there, and then I came back for a second round because I like abuse. And Robbie happened to be one of the uh, one of the performers and managers there when I went, and that's when I met him again. But this guy is like, you, you know, I whenever I get called because I've done comedy magic and I get booked for right. like corporate shows and stuff like that. But whenever they want a real magician, I try to explain to people what I do isn't what you're like. People will be like, "Hey, man, we want to call you. I got a kid's birthday party." I'm like, I don't do that kind of magic, you know. Uh, I also don't do real, real, if it takes me longer than five minutes to learn a trick, I don't do that trick. That's how it is. Meanwhile, Robbie's worked on like certain moves for years and years and years just to do one thing that you're like, oh, that was cute. And that's it. And you move on. But to to him, magic's like a, a passion. Like what I feel for comedy is what he does with magic. Oh, let's. Let's rewind that. What you feel for comedy? I seen your days of feeling for comedy. Yeah, not the greatest. Not the greatest what? Oh, I don't. Like, ugh. Why am I here? No, there's uh, a difference between uh, having a love for comedy and having a love for local comedians. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, what I'm saying, like, I'm passionate about comedy. I love the history of stand up, the history of comedy. I appreciate watching good comedians perform all that being said uh none of that love factors in when you're covering your buddy's open mic night on a wednesday and some guy's coming up telling you why he deserves to have 20 minutes because this is his first time doing comedy and he brought out three people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> speaking of which i'll be hosting an open mic at the orlando <laughs> improv this wednesday night that actually so happens yeah that happens oh, all the so time somebody times. gets up there their first time and then they think they, they deserve 20 minutes oh yeah oh yeah some people wow. come up and be like look i can't do five i have notebooks full of stuff how long you been doing comedy i don't like that question i've been writing stuff for years i'm like there's a difference yeah there's a difference you learn real quick your first time on stage doing stand-up that all those notebooks you've been writing and dreaming of doing comedy for years mean absolutely shit especially when you find out that 90 percent of those notebooks that you thought were original jokes has been done and done better by someone better than you yeah, so pretty much. and they, they always like uh Oh man, you only get three minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got like thirty. I'm like, I, okay. <laughs> Let me see you do three. Yeah, give, give me three. And we'll talk about the thirty you have. It, it's funny because when you meet people first starting in comedy, they swear they got like two hours. But you meet someone who's been doing it ten, ten years, and they're like, I don't even have five minutes. I like. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I've been lucky because like I love hanging out with you guys up at the open mics, and whenever I get there, I always hang out with cool com- comics. I don't I don't have any people that I've met there that are really like egotistical and stuff like that. Or maybe I'm just meeting them at the right time. Yeah, we, we try to shield you from the assholes. But uh, <laughs> more importantly, sometimes I feel like like when I'm out with, let's call lay people, normal civilians, and I'm at a party or something, like I ever get invited to those. But let's say I'm at a party or something, and someone's like, oh, this is my buddy Mike. He's a comedian. And then someone's like, oh, you're a comedian? Tell us a joke. And I'm like, look, I'm just here to hang out. Yeah, I do the exact same thing to you whenever Robbie's around. <laughs> like, whenever Robbie's around, I'm like, Robbie, do you have anything on you? Do you have a, you trick? a trick? Do it. Do it. Dance, monkey. Dance. <laughs> Come on, man. But, Make some magic. But it, it's funny because I think I just have more belief in your skills or more passion for your skills sometimes because you'll hang out like at the improv, watch a comedy show, and then the show will drop and there will just be crowds of people mulling around the bar. And if I go over and be like, hey, uh, ladies, gentlemen, this is my buddy Robin Morley. He's one of the finest close-up performers in Central Florida, if not the state, if not the country. Do you mind if he shows you a trick? You start off as all shy, but I'll come back 30 minutes later and you're just like still doing stuff, blowing people away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get into it, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's like... I'm I'm naturally a general generally in in general a very shy person. I I have my moments, but when I'm performing, mm-hmm. something happens. Yeah. 
I don't know what it is. Like it's like when I finally am like in performance mode, mm -hmm. something happens, and that all that shyness just goes out the window. And I'll even talk shit to people I have no business mm -hmm. talking shit to. Yeah, like you know, you'll have that big guy up there who's the alpha male, and he's got his girlfriend sitting there who's freaking out over the magic, but he's got to neutralize me because he doesn't like what you know. You you'll see it. It's almost like watching. Oh, me. they get pissed off. Oh, because bro, the dude. Like, like, yeah, man. No well, shit. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they they're cool about it, and they'll be like, "Yo, bro, thanks, man. You know that that was really awesome or whatever." Okay. Uh, but then sometimes you got the guy and if, if she's enjoying it a little too much mm -hmm. yeah it's like, the same if, if he sees like there might be a little chemistry between it's the, two, the you, bro, same in any entertainment form like when you're doing comedy and you got that girl at the front table laughing and her boyfriend's been laughing until he realizes she's laughing a little too hard and then he does the arms crossed oh, all of a sudden yeah, into yeah, yeah. or if you're in a band and you're playing and all of a sudden everybody's enjoying the band but then the guy knows his man my girl's checking out that guitar it's a little too much all of a sudden he's like this band sucks and it's the same thing with magic it's like uh you know i've seen guys like robbie will make the car disappear come back signed in some weird location and the girl's like, oh, my God, you're so amazing. And you see the guy's face just drop like, come on, we got to go on magic's for kids. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Well, talent is an aphrodisiac, man. Like when you get around people and you start doing stuff and they see that it's good, mm -hmm. um, th there's a natural attractive vibe that comes from that, even with comedy. Like uh, I can imagine that you guys get hit on all the time after shows. Yeah. Usually by dudes. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I get hit on all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I heard you talking about all that stuff. You're not happy with your girl on stage. Let me just say, maybe you're going for the wrong side that never happened but really i said that to you last week <laughs> that's word for word the conversation i had with you see you don't listen to me you hear me but you don't listen oh here we go again oh, <laughs> oh, oh shit destined just to be your co-host partner oh. uh, podcast but uh so you also like a lot of times first of all you got your own show every wednesday night at sluice dinner theater you yep, do the pre-show uh, over there wednesday uh, uh yeah it's around it's basically a pre-dinner show experience. You come in, uh, we have a little cocktail lounge set up in the garden room, and uh, what happens is is you'll come in there, uh, it's an extra 10 bucks if you're going to the dinner show, and you sit, you enjoy some cocktails, and I do a, about a 45-minute set. Nice. And like it's it, a lot of fun. We intimate, have a close show of close-up. I've seen, I've seen it. It's very good, very impressive stuff. It's a healthy mixture of parlor magic and close-up magic. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really do close-up magic in parlor situations at least most close-up magic true close-up magic is good for an audience of maybe three four five people um any more than that they're not going to be able to see right so right. you have to be really conscious of that and you have to choose material that will work for a crowd that you're capable of holding i think that room they say they've seen 70 in that room i find that very hard to believe oh it's a small room yeah well you've, you've been in the garden room, garden room at sluice we do uh oh, the showcase our saturday night open mic at or the main one no, no, the showcase on Saturday nights in the garden okay, room. Okay, okay, yep. yeah. But uh, also... Could you imagine 70 people yeah, in that room? Yeah, that'd be packed. We, we've had it. 70? We've had it. Not comfortably, but we've had it. Yeah. Uh, but also, why was this? This is your... You do a Christmas party, right? Every year out in Texas? Yeah, And that's it. for the guy who owns... What is it? He owned like four... At, at, the, at the height, I think he sold a few of them since then. But when I first started working for him, he owned like 41 Sonic franchises. Sonic... Uh, hamburger place? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, the little drive-in place, man, where you can go and get the, you can just drive up and right. the lady comes out on roller skates and the, the one with the two uh, gay guys always talking about having like. Fries why why are they gay? They're just two guys who like going out to eat together. They love eating hot dogs together, dude. They're not gay. <laughs> what do you mean they're not gay? They're they're not. Gay. Do you know those two guys actually came from like an improv troupe? That, that's, and I'm now they're right up bad. there. I'm just saying. You, you know, those guys make a shit. They make like Geico lady money. That's dude, how much they make. That's fine, man. What makes you think they're gay? Because they share a shake with one straw. Dude, I eat dinner your, over your house every Tuesday night. But I don't feed you. But you lick my fingers clean. That's not the point. And sometimes fingers mean other things. <laughs> Where's your feet at? Let me touch you. Yeah, no, <laughs> God damn it. Keep your shoes on around this guy. <laughs> yeah. He tricks you, man, because he tells you, hey, no shoes in the house. And then he plays footsies with you the whole fucking time. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. Yeah, you're Girls never told me to take off my shoes when I come in this house. You, you're like, hey, you gonna take those? I'm like, dude, I just walked in the door. Let me touch your feet. No, <laughs> <laughs> fucking freak. Okay, so well, you've been doing that for what? How many years now? Going uh, out there? God, you and I actually started doing that one together back in the day. This was 2015. No, no, the uh, the Sonic party. Oh, the Sonic thing. I've been doing that since 2009. <laughs> you guys had a Sonic party together? Yeah. yeah, I've been doing that almost 10 years now. Nice, man. He flies you out. You stay at the mansion or whatever. Yeah, he's got a... Well, I mean, the guy's a busy man. He never, he never mm -hmm. really in his house. So when I go there, I pretty much have his entire, like, house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the upper floor is decked out. Oh, it's you got, sleep there and everything? Yeah. 
Wow. Oh, bro, <laughs> this place is a mansion. It's uh, it's ridiculous. It's one of those places you can stay in that house and never see anyone else. Yeah, like, no, he don't even know you're there. Like, you're he's still got, here? He's, so, got, he's got two garages uh, like that he had. Well, I, I say garages. These are warehouses. Mm-hmm. And they have nothing but muscle cars that he's restored. And like he's got a $1.5 million RV in one of them. Wow. Uh, he's got a Dodge Viper. Like this guy is ridiculous. I've never been in a mansion. But if you met him, you'd never realize. You, sh- you, you would never guess he's a multimillionaire. Yeah, you should become a magician instead of a comedian. Then you get to hang out with richer people. <laughs> I need to do something. I know. I need to, we you been in a mansion? We need to change it up. What? You ever been in a mansion? Have I been in a mansion? Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Uh, for a while, I was doing another job. I'm one not of talking my, about someone that has three bedrooms. One of my no 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 no. <laughs> okay. One of my uh, like thirty eight jobs over my life. Uh, I was I did uh, countertop custom countertops like granite and stuff like that like i would go and do the estimates and everything else and figure out what we need what shapes what size how much it was going to cost and sometimes i'll go along with the installers just to make sure that oh that doesn't count that being said <laughs> the reason i bring it up i was down in uh palm beach you were working like my people i was working but i was inside a mansion people. the people the heirs to the ford motor ford motor company uh-huh in palm beach they had a house. I got lost in the guest house that I had to go through to get to the main house. This place, no joke, had 18, 18 different bedrooms in this house that we were putting. Like, each one had its own bathroom. We were doing the countertops and that. But the guest house is larger than any house I've ever seen in my life. See, but I'm saying you have never been invited to a mansion. They paid me to be there. I was putting in counters. <laughs> And you know what they, you know what? No, he got invited. He you got know invited what? To that like- guest house operated all year round, and that's where the maids and the staff stayed. But this was just a summer home for these Ford people. Like, they would just come down to Florida, like, two months out of the year, and this was the house they lived in. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that counts. Do, do I get invited to nice places? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, he got invited to a nice place. We haven't got it. Well, I haven't. Yeah. And you didn't really. No, who's going to invite me anyway? <laughs> yes, you yes, barely yes. let me come over here every That's Tuesday. True. It is a mansion for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Any place that my family's not is luxury. <laughs> so, uh, well, enough about Robbie Moreland, of course. Yes, uh, definitely come out, see him live and everything else. Uh, but that being said, I don't I don't really follow this. Okay. But I didn't about? know. the way that The way that you didn't know that I was kind of into politics a little bit. I didn't know that you were such a fan of Oscars. Oh, well. Why? I mean, I'm not a fan of it. it just, I mean, it I know on. you love movies and stuff, but it turns out you're not really even into, you don't even care who gets awards. No, not at all. So you watch the Oscars solely for? I watched a musical performance. Okay, so who who performed this year? They did um, did a, they did uh, Queen. They and did Queen? It, yeah, and then they had... Uh, did they have the actor go up on stage and do Queen? Well, unless they drag his dead body out. Then, <laughs> no. Oh, come on. No, he said oh, the even actor. the actor. Oh, sorry, no. They had, um, Adam Landberg. Oh, yeah, who's singing with... Yeah, yeah he's horrible. like the front... Yeah, is he? It was just too much. It was just too flamboyant. Yeah. But, even man, Freddie Mercury's like, can we get it down a little? Like, eyeshadow yeah. on <laughs> and shit. It was just weird, man. It was just mm. a weird performance. And, All right, uh, so they had uh, Freddie... And Queen. Yeah. And, then, and they had Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Yeah, they're basically. smashing. That that's what everybody's saying. Oh man, that was I watched the whole thing like, oh yeah, there's there's too much chemistry. They, they could have just fucked on that piano and everybody's like, oh okay. But he has a relationship with someone with Lady Gaga. <laughs> no, he's like engaged or married. Or it's something. Bradley Cooper. Who gives a shit? He yeah. does whatever he wants. That's true. <laughs> and then I did see. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, what's his name? The guy from the Kingsman movies. He's going to be playing Elton John in the upcoming movie Rocket Man. Him and Elton John did. A performance at the Oscars, oh, right? That's who that guy is. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I don't know who that guy is. He's from Kingsman. He's from uh, the last Robin Hood flop with uh, Jamie uh, Fox. Yeah, yeah, I forget his name, but it just came out recently that he, I guess, is homosexual. And uh, really, yeah, girls around me are just like heartbroken, and I'm like laughing. Girls around you? Girls around. Okay. Girls, female friends of mine were like, oh, no, we lost another one. <laughs> and I'm just like, them. really? Because I gained one. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> it's so not believable. <laughs> that you, no. that you have girls uh, around Dude, you. I just, that's the stance I take now. Whenever girls are like, oh, I just found out he's gay. Like, they're already upset. And then I'm like, oh, so basically, I have a better shot than you do at this point. <laughs> Sleep on that tonight. <laughs> if I wanted to. Is that like the new thing that's gonna happen now? What? Where he's gonna have like um, 
documentaries of rock stars now since they're not really considered rock stars so we got to show why they became rock stars because well, freddie mercury was a full-fledged rock star I get that there's no way elton john's not a now, rock star nowadays mm -hmm. musicians are not considered rock stars i don't think anymore they don't have like that like mike Mot motley crew just put out another documentary he's on netflix right now mm -hmm. mm. and then like well, we're going to get an Aussie. I'm surprised. We'll probably get an Aussie well, uh, I think documentary the, movie. I think the thing is, if you look back and realize that Elvis Presley is largely considered the first legitimate rock star. Okay. Like, he's the first one that people worship, worship, worship. And even, even today, people still. But I think it was easier to become that status back before. Not easier. I'm sorry. It was more important if you got noticed there wasn't social media. You couldn't just have your band on Spotify and pick up local followers. Like it was all controlled by the, there were a few radio stations, a few TV stations, unless you were on there, the rest of the world didn't know about you, mm -hmm. you know? And now everybody gets their 15 minutes. Like everybody yeah, gets yeah. their shot, but then fades into obscurity. I mean, how many of these bands that we loved in the nineties, you can go, where are they now? And these people are like, Oh, he's uh, he it's manages a, a Chili's out in San Diego, you know? <laughs> Like, yeah. it's so much harder to stay at that top tier nowadays. I Who think. was first, Beatles or Elvis, uh, Elvis right? Uh, yeah, Elvis was before the Beatles, right? Elvis, I'm yeah. Elvis, <laughs> yeah. They, they were around the same era. Mm. Okay. Mm. I guess yeah. the Beatles were rock stars, too. Oh, yeah. Beatles. Vince Stones. Of course. Um, yeah. You got um, David Bowie. Yeah, yeah, there's legitimate yeah, legends. So El yeah, Elvis even was even first. Bruce Springsteen nowadays. Bruce Springsteen, he's going to be, a, you know, he's in the history of legends of rock. But I like these, but like do you like the documentary movies? Like I love them. Like, yeah, I think cause I want to see like all the crazy shit that happened to these guys. Like I don't really care about their I think my problem though is a lot of people's problems. Like I remember uh The Doors. Uh Val Kilmer did a great job. The Doors. Val Kilmer did a great job of playing Jim doors. Morrison. Yes. But people mistake, people mistake, they see the Doors film and they go, okay, every bit of that is historically accurate. Same thing with the uh, Queen one that just came oh, out. Oh, I didn't see it, so. Pe people are so easy to go, I watched that movie, so now I know everything about Queen. I watched that movie, so now I know everything well, about the yeah. Doors. But it's not that way. I mean, there were so many inconsistencies because for movie magic, they needed to, like, jump this, edit this. Like, in the Queen documentary, it makes it look like he decided to come out to his parents come out about his AIDS and come out, uh, find his boyfriend all on the same day on the way to a festival. They're like, that was like three different years worth of crap crammed into oh, one day okay, okay. for the sake of movie magic. It was still pretty accurate. Same thing with like an NWA movie. Did you watch that one? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, <laughs> Because no, I went to the theater and they're like, we're not selling you this ticket. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, if you can't request the movie without saying the name without abbreviate it, you're not allowed in this theater. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a movie for the ticket to the movie Nice Guys with Attitudes? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, nice guys? Say it right, Cracker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say it with your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with your chest. So okay, so you watch it simply to rip on the music. You you enjoy the musical performances. Yeah, they're okay. Okay, but as I found out earlier today, what you actually enjoy is uh, just uh, ripping the shit out of the things people wear. Right. Well, I I do enjoy the fact like Black Panther won. Yeah. And did it? What did it get? Uh, best Picture. Yeah. And then. Uh, the Spider Man, Spider Into the Spider Verse, won Best Animation Movie. Wait a minute, I, I thought the Green Book. Yet. I thought the Green Book got Best Picture. You were telling me. Uh, you know what? I don't know. Black Panther won something, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the Green Book won. I think Best Picture. Best probably. Picture. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So Black Panther did not get Best. They picture. won something, mm -hmm. but it was like the first superhero movie to ever win an Oscar. So was it? Yeah. Oh well, there's that. That's that's why I was like, oh, that's a first. Right. And then I think Spider Man was the first. Okay. Animated something to get an Oscar? Yeah. That can't be true because Disney must have got an Oscar for something. But not Superhero. Unless The Incredibles got one. I don't think The Incredibles got one. So then it is the first Superhero. Animated Superhero. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's that the cool. time of super Superheroes. But no, I, I, I watch Oscars and shit on people's two outfits because they're hilarious. So what we got here? What we got? Okay. Uh, that's uh, that's J-Lo, right? Well, J-Lo looking fine. And that's A-Rod. And he's dressed like uh, he's dressed like James Bond. He's got the white jacket with the black bow tie, black pants, and it almost makes you uh, forget about the whole steroid thing, right? 
<laughs> he looks like such a dork, man. He mm-hmm. looks like he's serving her cocktails. But she looks like a fucking disco ball. Like, <laughs> like there's it. It literally is just a disco ball, a long very, dress, very fit disco ball. Mm. Okay, we need to <laughs> we need to switch off that. Pi- Holy shit! What the fuck is that? That looked like a picnic basket exploded on some guy. <laughs> that's a Tommy Hilfiger. That's Tommy Hill. That's the guy in charge of fashion, right there. That's the guy he's not even wearing guys. socks with his fucking slippers. Oh, he's not wearing socks. Oh, he's one of those guys. Look yeah. at that white pace. You would love him. Just nah, all that man. exposed foot for you to rub people on. People don't know where socks got stinky feet, man. They don't you make me know. <laughs> what? Right. Look, we're barefoot in this place. That's fine, but you don't no more mm. socks and shoes. You like your Foot fetishes. No I don't have foot right. fetish. You have a foot fetish. I do not. I got a foot fear. You got a foot fetish? Foot fetish. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the way you said that. Like you just walked up to him at Parliament <laughs> House going, You got a foot fetish. Come here, boy. Let me see those. Come on. Right. Yeah, who I else we got? Swipey swipe. Swipe. on a lady. Okay, this is uh Pharrell. This is Pharrell hit song Happy, beat maker for so many people. And he looks like who's who's he looks like the guitar player from ACDC that wore the schoolboy outfit, Dude, except his, his is camouflaged. His socks are all wrinkled he's, out. Are those Doc Martens? Dude, People still wear Doc Martens? Oh, he's definitely faking his height. Yeah. Dude, look at that. Cause he's like my height. Yeah. And he's like just like... He looks... Tall. And I don't know who his date is, but she's wearing this black type of... It's like, like a foo-foo. Like a smock looking. It almost it looks, looks like, like feathers. Curtains. Yeah, it looks like feathers from a distance. But it really looks like a mom walking her kid to some weird private school on the first day. It's like, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's wearing short shorts. Like his father wanted him to join the military, but mm-hmm. then he's just like, nah. Mm-hmm. And now this is like his way of making it up mm-hmm. for it with the shorts. Yeah. Nah, let's see. So, okay. Uh, nah. Oh, that's the uh, that's uh, Maher Shala Ali. Who the hell is that? He's the actor from the Green Book, but he oh, also, yeah. uh, as Robbie pointed out earlier, he played Remy on. House of, cards. House of Cards, and I think he played Con Mouth in uh, Luke Cage, Luke Cage, right? What was the other movie he just played in? S- did you say Sala? Oh uh, yeah, um, Alita. Alita. Alita Battle yeah. Angel. Yeah, the Battle Angel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's a, he's a good actor. I like him. He's, I like he's everything he's decent, done. And then all of a sudden he puts on that like like that uh, Smurf hat on. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, but something's yeah. It's like a condom. It, well, he's bald. It gets cold. What? But what's going on down below? Like, is he wearing knee high socks or something? Or what nah, are those he's boots? He's good to go. He, are you sure? Those yeah, look like those. Wait, like are we I don't know. Maybe it's just the pants. Three of the guys. The three guys with the least fashion sense. Doing fashion I don't know. Control. There's not much I can say about this brother. He looks. He looks awesome. <laughs> he looks like, awesome. <laughs> his date is wearing like it looks like it's Japanese inspired like kimono type thing, but it looks like it's also a print of the galaxy. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? Isn't that what you're there? That's some. Uh, never mind. All right. <laughs> it's just good, just moving on. All right, oh, here hey, we here we go. Here's your dude. Bring on, uh, Aquaman over here wearing a suede pink outfit. Jason Momoa. He's that, Aquaman, but he's dressed like a fucking salmon. And doesn't even fit him. It's mm. like it's like all bursting out. It looked like he's wearing my outfit of a of a. Of a That's just suit. to show how big he is. <laughs> he's just like Ooh, look. Dude, he's he can't even fit into a normal. Shoulder, that looks like the tux my dad would have worn to his wedding in 1972. <laughs> you know. All right, this is the best one. I'm, we're gonna go straight. We're gonna go straight to the best one. Holy shit! Our boy Spike Lee. Spike Lee. <laughs> okay, so just to break this down, he's wearing. I have that purple suit, by the way. Shut up. No, dude. I I used to wear it when we did the magic gigs. You I got. Did. I do yes. have that purple suit. Oh my god. Uh, but I I got it one year because I did uh, Joker at MegaCon for the roast of Batman. Yeah, but it's not like this. Dude. Yeah, it's like that. You, you no, know, it like is a, like a like a gay conductor. From no, like no, Willy Wonka. No, <laughs> the suit is what I have. But this guy, he's wearing a full purple suit, blue shirt, purple tie, uh, and he's wearing like the uh, the the skipper from Gilligan's Islands cap, but it's purple. And you know what? He's wearing gold shoes. He look. He looks like maybe he's the porter on Soul Plane. You know, like maybe he's the guy that ta- he could be the pilot. He could be the co-pilot of Soul Plane. And what's his? Can you? Can we zoom in? What's his ring say? He's wearing uh, hate, hate and love. Hate and love. Yeah. He looks. Yep. He looks like the mascot for like remember the juice barrels. Mm-hmm. Like if the juice barrels had a mascot, instead of Kool Aid Man, this would be him. Ah, uh, we were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. Like, yeah, he's he's the grape drink Some sponsor. Somebody grape drink, man. Give me that grape drink. He's like, purple. what up? <laughs> give, me that, give me that purple stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, Spike Lee, and then uh, of course this last guy, Billy Porter. He's made a lot of news for this outfit. Well, he's wearing a dress. And well, n- technically, the top is a tux. The bottom's a gown. 
And uh, it's a dress. I don't know what it, what there is to say about it other than that. Uh, That's what you need the cane for. That way you can look underneath, see what's going on. I don't think I want to know what's going <laughs> on underneath there. But um, yeah, good for good for him. <laughs> he stays quiet. He's like, I'm not touching this shit. Yeah. Hey, touching. hey, listen, man. Good I, for him. He I, rocked it. <clears throat> I, I'm gonna stay out of that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he looks like uh, the. Wicked stepmother from Cinderella. Or like, like a reboot. <laughs> I did a reboot and he would do it. <laughs> oh, so uh, I spent some time doing something that uh, you might enjoy today. What's that? Well, uh, remember we had a talk a while back and uh, I had seen a documentary about never going to the moon and you called me a liar and an idiot and everything else. And then you went ahead and watched that documentary and a week later you're like, we never went to the moon. Yeah. Well, I've decided that every now and then I'm going to bring forth a new conspiracy and think, see if I can flip you. Because you seem very right. susceptible, here, music, which I also your am. Your music's playing. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> Fucking weird. So, <laughs> this is what I'm going to ask you. Have you heard of people called flat earthers? Oh, geez. Stop the oh, Shut up. What? Flat earthers. Don't tell me you're one. Am I one? Yes. How can you not be? Hear me out. Hear me out. Because remember, up until three months ago, you thought we went to the moon. Well, I mean, I still kind of do, but whatever. Okay, but you're on the fence now, right? On the fence. Okay. So flat earthers are a group of people who actually, it's just that they believe the earth is flat. Yeah, they're called stupid. They're called stupid. But, (laughs) well, they would say the same thing to us who they happen to call round earthers now. Not just people. (laughs) We are round earthers if you believe the earth is round. Uh, the funny thing is flat earthers tend to believe, much like the Truman Show, uh, that we live on this this dome-like thing in the universe. Right. So the earth is flat. There's this dome over us, and inside that dome are the sun and the moon. And then uh, the reason... Look at your face. Yeah, He's like, th- this is the best part. I'd never heard this. They say that the Arctics are what keep us trapped in. So the oceans are held on this flat surface by walls of ice as they explain themselves, much like the Great Wall in Game of Thrones. Like that huge ice wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically that's what they say. Then there's different branches in the flat earthers. Like there's people in the flat earthers called infinite infinite planes people. And they believe everything except the ice walls. They're like, no, it's just, it's flat, but it goes on forever. And flat earthers look at them and go, you are giving us a bad name. You're making us look like so there's fools. different levels of flat There's earth. There's different groups and factions. And where do you fall in between the... the where do I fall right now? Yeah. Well, I believe the earth is round. Okay. But that being said... What about... Please tell me you're not a flat earther. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, son of a... Son of a like, that, get out. Hey, that, listen... I look at my Google Earth all the time, okay? It's round. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. round. But once again, if you believe me that we've never been to the moon, but you got to start believing other things. Like maybe uh, we had to come up with lies to cover the... Uh, once you said we went to the moon, they're like, well, good. Show us pictures of the Earth. And then they're like, okay, well, this is where we got to come up with some pictures of the Earth. They're, the flat earthers basically say that everything NASA has shown us was faked. And that a lot of the reason NASA... Uh, comes up with all this fake stuff is so that they can pocket all the money and uh, embezzle money, basically. Basically, NASA just sends out pictures of fake stuff that they had artists do and everything like that. Bro, there's there's satellite photos. Those are faked. <laughs> okay. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, th- this is what they say. The fact that uh, if you take like a laser, if you're on water, okay, okay and uh, you're on one boat, and you put another boat six miles away. Yeah. They say that the Earth curvature should be about 15 degrees for every, you know, eight miles or something like that. Okay. So if you take a laser and you shoot it through to that other laser, if we were curving, or if you shoot it through to a target on the other boat, if we were curving, that laser should not hit because if you're shooting it straight and there's a curve, it should. So what they're saying is that whenever they do that test, they hit directly onto the other target, which proves that there's no curvature to the Earth, which proves that the Earth is not round. That makes no damn sense at all, bro. Because they're on the same... Anyways. I'm just telling uh, you. How, how do you explain snipers? They have to use like the oh. Coriolis effect when they're doing like long-range shots Boom. because of the curvature of the Earth. Uh, let me help you out there. 
You mean the snipers that are employed by our government, which pays NASA? <laughs> oh, <that's so> shit. <laughs> I forgot this was a conspiracy theory. But... Oh, oh, man. Hey, why don't you come over here and have some more of the free Kool-Aid we like to feed you guys, huh? Oh. You guys just want to sit there with your, oh, we got pictures and we got proof. And, oh, what's your source for all that? Well, the government. And they would never lie to us. <laughs> you can't win. Did you meet someone recently for this to pop up? Like there's a flat earther? Uh, I was taking care of some emails, and, you know, I like to put on Netflix in the background. Oh, okay. And I guess based on my viewing selections of shitty stuff, they're like, ah, oh, you might enjoy this about flat earth. And this is me going into every conspiracy documentary. First five minutes. All right, let's see what's up with these wackos. Next ten minutes. Look at this guy. He's a fucking nut job. After 25, he might have a point. <laughs> After 40, I'm like, where do I send my money? You guys need to be funded. The so truth you were kind of convinced? Down. What? You were kind of convinced? It's not that I'm kind of convinced. It's just not that I've been uh, unconvinced. So you're you're on the fence of believing that the earth is flat. Well, I don't know. Because... <laughs> because... Know. You're an ass. <laughs> I'm just... Does the fence go around us? Or is... What's what's that tweet that you had that you were telling me earlier? So someone from the Flat Earther Twitter page, apparently, I'm not sure if this is a hoax or not. Okay. But someone from the Flat Earther Twitter page I put out a couple of years back, the Flat Earther movement is growing. We have believers around the globe. And someone wrote back, read that last part, but very slowly. <laughs> he goes, we believe it around the globe. Around the globe. A small genius. Yes. Genius. Yes. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> But you know what? Uh, Shaq actually came. There's a lot of guys in the NBA. He was playing. That's, he here's was, what they say. Because Shaq made that statement on a podcast about, yeah, I just, there it's flat. You can't prove to me it's not. Blah, blah, blah. And then a week later, he came out and said, ah, I was just playing with y'all. And flat earthers take that to be, he knows. But they got to him and made him change his statement so that he wouldn't lose all his endorsements <sighs> and everything else. They say that most scientists agree with them however they would lose their tenure and uh financial things because you can't go around saying you're a flat earther and uh you know still have a job after that because you're crazy but they're like history will prove us right Jeez. whenever you start hearing words like us and they and all of that stuff the other flags. You, yeah. Yeah, the other fucking red flags like, no, oh no. you mean like every text of the constitution <laughs> oh I was starting to think you believe this kind of crazy shit, man. It's not that I don't believe it. You don't believe they in got the, to him. And mm. what else? What else? You, you do you do you believe in those uh, chemtrails? Whatever those things are called in the sky. Oh, we're being poisoned by things that fly above oh, us. Of course. Shit. How can you not? Okay. How can you not? How can you not look <laughs> at the wish, statistics of people who live by power lines and realize that there's shit going on? So do you believe that the government controls the weather? Who who asked you to ask me that? <laughs> Are you serious? You believe this shit? Who asked you? No, no one asked No, you. stop recording. <laughs> stop recording. Hit the stop. You hear helicopters? Uh, uh, I yeah. hear helicopters. In your head. <laughs> it's like weirdo. It's like that scene from Apocalypse yeah. Now. Yeah. So, no, I'm just broaching that to you. All I'm asking is much like last time. Just watch watch a documentary. If you, I'll watch a documentary. Okay, and next week you're going to be like... Dude, no. The moon, one, the moon one was weird. If you watch, like, based off the whole gravity and things like that, how he like floated up and uh -huh. went down. Yeah, I was like, yo, it looks like he's on strings. I will tell you this, uh, seriously, where I lie, we didn't go to the moon, and flat earthers are nuts. <laughs> They're crazy. See, the moon was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and then uh, they thought they had. Him. Remember, we had the whole uh, lunar eclipse last year. Yeah, when everybody but Trump was out there with the special glasses yeah. on because he's like, my eyes are stronger than normal human eyes. Yeah. And, uh, they, most scientists thought, well, good flat earthers will finally shut up because this proves that, you know, we're a sphere passing from casting a shadow and all flat earthers says like, that proves nothing. We never said what direction we were. <laughs> so if you have a quarter and you turn it on the side, then yeah, it would look like just a line. But if you turn that quarter this way, is that what this documentary is just guys like trying to prove that they're not fucking crazy. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. I'll enjoy it. It's on YouTube. You'll be texting me the whole time. You're like, really, dude? It's really? On YouTube? Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's on Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Even so better. Check that. But that's it for my conspiracy portion All this right. week. But uh, you know what? You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to uh, go too far. Like, yeah, these people are utterly crazy. There's no doubt about that. But then uh, there's there's crazy people all around the world, 
And uh, I think I pulled up some of my favorite stories this week. So. Is Mike's segment of news? <laughs> that's right. Here we go. Oh, this so country corny. of ours. Where to start? Oh, we'll start with something that hits. Uh, yeah, this will be a good one to go with. Oh, yeah, it was that one. If it opens. Here we go. Uh, Vermont couple married at Walmart where they met. That's right. An assistant manager pronounced Joanne and William Bolander in front of a display of flowers. The bride wore black, but that wasn't the most unusual thing about a wedding in Berlin, Vermont last week. The couple chose to get married in a Walmart with the ceremony performed by an assistant manager. Joanne and William Bollinger, both employees at the Walmart, met there. Jesus. They had planned to get married at the local courthouse when the retailer's personnel manager offered the store as a venue. The ceremony was set for the employee break room area with assistant manager Todd Sobel, who is also a minister, officiating. But at the last minute, the wedding was moved to the area of the store where fresh flowers are on display. We're gathered here today to celebrate one of life's greatest moments, Sobel is heard saying a video and in video of the wedding. The couple had not thought about the attention their wedding might receive on social media. We were just doing it because it was fast, it was easy, and it was convenient. If that's not a Walmart slogan thrown in, why wouldn't you want to do fast, easy, and convenient on the most important the day of your life? Who is the catering? <laughs> Gee, like, I wonder. Like, they like actually checkers because like checkers inside of when, Walmart. When, when they say they got married in front of the flower section at Walmart, literally, when you walk into Walmart and on the right is the produce, yeah. and there's those flowers, flowers. They got married with those six ninety nine a dozen signs right behind them. What I want to know is if you got married at Walmart and you decide to get a divorce, is that just rolling back commitment? <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. So, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> uh, here's something you might enjoy, actually. I might enjoy this mm -hmm. one. All right, go ahead. This happens in Arlington, Texas. <laughs> Look at you looking up news. Fucking turn. I keep going. <laughs> these, are fun, these are fun stories, though. A man who came in last in his fantasy football league had to do a very nutty thing as punishment. Walk around a dog park covered head to toe in peanut butter. Wait, he did that shit for, like, a publicity, though, right? No, no. Steven Trout, 25, had never played fantasy football before this year, oh. but decided to join a league with some high school friends who have been playing together since 2009. It was my first year, and I didn't do any kind of studying at first. I just kind of jumped in. Just butt naked with peanut butter all over him? Well, he, no, no. He was in the fantasy football league. Yeah, yeah, he lost. He lost. And I guess he either had the choice of paying the winner $250 or taking a humiliating dare. So the humiliating dare was to cover himself head to toe in peanut butter, wearing only a golden speedo, and go through a dog park. So uh, Is that animal abuse. Uh, I'm just wondering. Do you, and he said everybody at the park took it as like a good nature thing. He's like, I lost a bet. I lost yeah. a bet. But we live in a PC culture where you know there was one dog owner go, my dog has peanut allergies. <laughs> or he just bent over having one dog just freaking toss his mm -hmm. salad in the public. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, no, it's, it's a stunt. Yeah, it's, it's, a, just, stunt. A, it's a just a stunt. Yeah, it's just it's, a stunt. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say whenever I'm caught doing something stupid now. I'm going to be like, I lost a bet. I lost a bet. Lo There's a camera <laughs> right over there. The cop's going to be like, uh, we have you blowing a .9. Oh, I'm like, I lost the they fantasy football yeah. said I wouldn't drink 16 Jaeger bombs and get behind the wheel. You know, they called out my masculinity. We have an excuse now. Yeah. What's the have you ever done a bet where you had to do something humiliating? No. You, I never put myself in those situations. No, yeah, I'll put myself in those like weird kind of like white boy situation. <laughs> why, why is that a white boy? OK, That's this white boy specifically, shit. this guy was white. That so I got no leg to stuff. stand on here. How about you? Ever, uh, ne never. Lose no, I, I also am a white boy, but I also avoid mm -hmm. those white boy situations. Any white boy <laughs> shit? Mm -hmm. No weird magician kind of thing? Like, I don't know, man. Like, I grew up in uh, Savannah, Georgia, and I hung out with a bunch of good old boys, and they used to do some pretty depraved shit. Yeah, so like we, we would all be or anything and, like that? Oh, no, but you'd wake up with, like, <laughs> beer bottles and shit all over you, and, like, you'd be like, what the hell? Oh, okay. Like, hey, mm -hmm. no, nothing too crazy. Uh, you might enjoy this. I like how you go, you might enjoy this. So far, you have... You have brought to me about a naked dude getting peanut butter licked out of his b hole, and you were all into it. Yeah, I was great into it. No, I never said b hole. You brought that up and, every time, and, every time. That's why and, in our theme song, it's all about Kermit's butthole. And, and and a couple getting married at Walmart. I'm gonna like this. All right, what's the next yeah. one? I'm gonna like. Okay, well, this actually uh, falls into you know our buddy Robert Kraft. 
right? G- GM. Uh, well, the Pat, the pa- I mean, I don't care for the Patriots, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. He got caught up in that uh, whole uh, yeah. tug and rub nice. massage scandals, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. Well, uh, check this out. A nail salon owner in Ohio has pledged to fight to keep her business's unusual and controversial name, Hand Jobs Salon. Yeah, he should have went there instead of going to Orchards Asia or something Perkins like that. Township Zoning Director Megan Sherlin said there have been complaints about the Hand Jobs Salon, which bears a large sign displaying the name of the shop above its entrance, and officials are looking into whether the sign could be considered obscene. Uh, now, here's the thing. What do you think goes on at hand job salon? You better get a hand job. No, it's just like a nail. Get your nails done? They do nails and pedicures. Yeah, and uh, what she actually said is the owner said, if you go in and get your nose done, it's called a nose job, right? Well, you come in and get your hands done, it's a hand job. And I'm like, she makes a valid point. She does, <laughs> but she's wrong. <laughs> that yeah. is a totally there's, different. There's that, no sexual undertones whatsoever. In none. <laughs> and it's funny because it says, if you see the sign, it says hand jobs in like huge writing and then a little writing under it goes nails. Yeah. <laughs> so, Did yeah, it could about, be misleading. Did you read about the whole Robert Kraft? I, uh, I did not. I did. I, I read about some of it. So I Robert, read about Robert Kraft. You know, he's a, a owner of the Pats. Yeah. Of New, and he's like a billionaire. Yeah. And he's like 77. 77. Mm hmm. Getting, my thing is this: Why is a billionaire getting an eighty dollars hand job? That's Come what I'm on. saying. Like, you know, like bro, doing you, it you wrong. You could afford the creme de la creme, man. You could be like that old guy that was with mm-hmm. uh, Anna Nicole Smith. He's like, mm-hmm. he has <laughs> his people are not looking out for him. Yeah, like, and you know, Jupiter is right around the corner. Yeah, from, I was here in Florida. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's right. It's also not too far from uh, Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago. Right. And you're telling me Donald Trump's name isn't somewhere? If Robert Kraft is Donald Trump introduced him to it. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's I'm true. saying. It, and he likes a deal, the art of the deal, you know. <laughs> Dude, he went in there twice. He went mm-hmm. out there during the playoffs when they before they beat the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. So that means he took a private jet mm-hmm. from wherever to Kansas, yeah, to Florida mm-hmm. in the morning. So and you then flew back. So you paid Washington. more in jet fuel than you paid for your yes. tug and rub. Well, he, he gave him a hundred dollar tip supposedly. Oh well, that was generous of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What nationality were these masseuses? Were they Korean? Oh, what, what 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 are we talking about uh-huh. here? Polish. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very, very loose man. Oh. Did you guys set that you, up? Did big, he big pay you? Bowl, Can we go through bowl. one without oh. you doing like? Oh, Mr. Hurley, relax, relax, relax. You're I cheap, want to cheap relax. Man. Cheap, cheap man. You're tense. You're, You're tense. tense. Relax, relax. Massage. Dollar a minute. Dollar a minute. Yeah. Dollar a minute. Two places in Orlando just got popped this week. Oh, did they? Yep. Yep. Where? One place over on 50, and uh, I was reading the article earlier today. Uh, and it all stemmed from the, now they're cracking down. See that? See, one more problem with the 1%. They come in, and now all of a sudden they're making it impossible for us hardworking guys to get a decent rate because now there's this investigation that's closing down everything. Stick to your high-end prostitutes. Let us have these. You guys ever went to one of those? No. You? Never. No. Like a rub and tug? No, well, I'm not saying I knew you get a massage every week. I didn't know it was that kind of massage. I get a massage, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's a couple's I massage. Have, I have never had a professional massage in my life. Really? Yeah, really. Oh man, I've so. been. I've been to two. Three. I don't get facials. I don't get pedicures. I don't. I've been okay. to three of these these shady. So you've been to the so the one you go to every week. That's like a legit massage no, I go parlor. To massage envy. Where okay. It's like no no weird shit going on. It's clean. Everything. Okay. You know, so that's just a straight up massage. Straight up massage. Okay, but you've accidentally, quote unquote, stumbled into these other places yes, before. And it's scary. Let's hear about this. Fuck. It's scary. How's this go down? How do they? What's the? What's the lingo? They first of all, how did you end up in these places? My buddy came from military. Oh, it's always a friend. It is, and and uh, I'll say I don't give a shit his name. His Maurice came from the military. <laughs> <laughs> he came from the military, and uh, it's across from Pom Pom Sandwich Place, which mm-hmm. I'm surprised the place hasn't got shut down yet. Okay. And uh, we ate lunch at Pom Pom. He's like, yo, let's go get a massage. I'm like, what? Two dudes get a massage. But you're like, no, nah, man, I get it all the time overseas. Mm-hmm. Let's go do it. I go, I should have known it was weird because you got to get buzzed in. Like, mm-hmm. you just don't walk in the front door. You got to get buzzed in. Mm-hmm. Like a really nice jewelry store. Right. Yeah. So then they have a waiting room and they collect the money up front. Mm-hmm. And what do they say they're charging you for when it's you take 50, the money? It was 50 bucks for mm-hmm. a massage. And I'm like, all right, let's get a massage. Okay. So the thing is, they have a move where they try to figure out if you do want a happy ending. Mm -hmm. 
And, and what's, well, how's that so go? They give you a massage on your, they, they put you on your stomach. First off, I'm like super tense because like it's shady and it's like gross. It's, mm-hmm. it's really gross. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, and they have like a, uh, they had a basket of like towels. I'm like, oh, that's jizz towels. Like those are jizz towels mm-hmm. in there. I know that. And uh, you're on your stomach to give you a massage. And what they do is they try to see if you're into it. They were like, she would like put her knees. She's wearing a short, short skirt, by the way. And she's like 50, 50 Asian lady. And she, she's like, so it's all professional when you get a massage until the time it comes where you have to like pony up. And then they uh, flip you on your back. And what she does is she takes, she massages your hand and she'll brush your hand against her cooch to see if you act about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, I pull away. I'm like, That's no. how you went? I got free. I freaked the How fuck old out. were you? Nah, I mean, like 30s. I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, He's like, I don't want to get more exact than that because yeah, people can start doing five, the math. Yeah. yeah. Five hey. years ago. What <laughs> I used okay. To say. Yeah. I get a 51 year old Korean lady rubbing your <laughs> hand <laughs> against her snatch. You know? <laughs> yeah. She's 56 now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> very, very strong man. Yeah. So that's what they say. They, and so everything's professional uh-huh. until they want that. And then all of a sudden you turn into baby. Like, mm-hmm. oh, baby, you want some more, baby? You little special deal. You're very tense, baby. No, you give good tip, baby. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And then she, like, takes her hand and, like, caresses into my crotch area. Mm-hmm. Dude, I was sitting. I was, like, laying down slash sitting up a little bit. Like, this kind of deal. I was able to jump on the table like a ninja. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm fucking done. Like, I was, <laughs> I was freaking out. Because, like, the only thing going through your head is, like, there's the cops are going to bust through this door mm-hmm. any minute now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be F my pants down because mm-hmm. I'm in my underwear. You're pretty yeah. much in your underwear unless I don't know who else gets naked. So I run out because they're like, I'm causing a commotion. Like, calm down, calm down, please, please, please. You're too tense. You're too tense. Too tense. <laughs> and, uh, my buddies, my, I kicked the, I kicked the door down where my buddy's at. Mm-hmm. And this mofo is like butt ass naked. Yeah. And his dong's <laughs> out. I'm like, yeah. yo. He's like, what? I'm like, we're leaving. He's like, oh. he didn't give you a heads up that that's what was going to go down? No. no. He's like, let's. Do- I find that hard to believe. In the car <laughs> ride on the way over, he's looking very, very specific massage parlor. And he doesn't mention, look, I get this done all the time. Dude, Here's the etiquette. He's, no, he didn't. He didn't read you in. No, he didn't read me in. I don't buy that. For he second. was on his back. He's like, "Less ching chong, more ding dong." I'm like, "No, dude." Wow. Like, <laughs> he's that's, like, wow. He's like, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, they talk too much. But anyways, that's the only thing he told me. <laughs> but as he told me to tell them, he's like, "No talkie talkie." So you got dressed and you left. Hell or did yeah. you walk out butt naked pretty much? Well, I had to fight my way out because they keep the doors locked from the outside. Ah, the outside. you're like, let me out. Let they had to buzz out. you. They had to, they had to unlock <laughs> the I kind of feel like they were looking at you going, you knew what this was. No. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. So when you went to Massage Envy, did you go, look, I had a bad experience last I time. So that. let's get this They're straight like, no, out of the way. very professional. I was mm. like, you better be because I don't want to go to jail <laughs> for getting a rub and tug. <laughs> so you were molested is what you're saying. I wasn't molested. Did they touch you down below? No, she didn't grab my junk. You just said her hand. No, went she over. Has a, right here, like like right in the like. Hey, if you were touched, it's okay, man. I wasn't touched by a grandma. We're here for you. I wasn't. Good. He wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. He wasn't mm-hmm. ready for what she was gonna show him, man. It was it's okay. It explains a lot now. So you know, hashtag you too. Oh, karate man. Oh, you're very tense. Very very tense. <laughs> Uh, you got some stuff you need to work through in therapy. <laughs> you really There's do. There's nothing in therapy, man. I'm just saying these rub and tug plays, they're all over the place. And they're always mm-hmm. open. You ever notice that? Like 24 hours. Yeah. They're always by truck stops and airports. Like, they're even by Universal by where, like, when you're mm-hmm. driving home, they're like, hey, 24 hours. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you know, you got a father of four. He just spent $1,400 on a vacation before he even bought a souvenir. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know. He needs a little relaxation, you know. I don't, I don't know. A nice I, rub it, here's the thing with hand jobs. I've never met, even when you're in a relationship and, you know. It's like you, pulling taffy, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never met anyone who does it as well as I do. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's each their own. But have you ever had the girl do it that just like, basically like she's revving a motorcycle? Like there's... Just you need to loosen up. It's not a, you know. It's just like a gra- like. So are like you it, trying to give my dick an Indian burn? Yeah, Is that you what get, you're doing? You got an Indian Have you ever burn? had that where it's just <laughs> like ah oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, it's just horrible. And it's that's just, why it's important. There are professionals out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. It, to me, it's a very personable thing. I'm like God gave you plenty of other ways to do this. You don't need to get your hands involved. You know. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's best if you sit back and let me take care of this. Um, 
So, hey, would you try this? Uh, <laughs> Segway out of this. Day. <laughs> yeah, Go we ahead. were going deep. A we Virginia deep. Brewery's Lucky Charms inspired beer. Oh, I saw this. Evokes the breakfast cereal, not only in its packaging, but in its use of marshmallows. Smart Mouth Brewing Company said the beer dubbed Saturday Morning will debut Saturday at its tasting room in Norfolk. The brewery describes the limited edition IPA as magically ridiculous. A play on Lucky Charms magically delicious slogan. The design of the can is also, I saw the can. The artwork's kind of cool, it actually. Looks like the box. It looks like the box of Lucky Charms. Uh, uh, Chris Niekirk of the Smart Mouth Brewing Company told USA Today, the beer is brewed with in-house toasted marshmallows and bulk dehydrated marshmallow bits. Uh, he said that Saturday morning has She's a so soft, gross. pillowy body with a slight cereal taste. No, you know why I think the dehydrated marshmallow bits is? Like when you finished off the cereal and at the bottom of the bag was just all the crumbs of all the marshmallows. That was good shit. That's like crack to a kid. I don't like candy and so beer and all that shit. He said, together. despite the Lucky Charms reference, Niekirk stressed the brewery is not marketing to children. It is just a beer evoking nostalgia in adults who remember days when Saturday mornings were a time that you sat around watching cartoons and playing games. And getting drunk. Uh, Saturday, <laughs> while your dad got drunk. Yeah, yeah the yeah. best of all your Saturday yeah. mornings as a kid. Uh, it's to be available at various restaurants, bars, and specialty shops in Virginia, so it doesn't look like it's going to be down in Florida. I'll tell you, I'm not a beer guy. Like, if I go to a bar, like, especially a lot of our comedy shows now take place at breweries. That's, like, a thing now. Yeah, that's a new thing now. You know, so a lot of these showcases are breweries. And people get so pissed off when I just walk up, and I'm like, uh, I'll take a Jameson. Oh, we don't have liquor. We just have beer. Okay, I'll take a Miller Lite. Oh, we don't do those. We have an IP, blah, 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 blah. And then they'll be like, they'll show a board where they're like this beer, the blah, blah, blah tastes like a Miller, like tastes like a Miller light. And I'm like, then why don't you just have a fucking Miller light? That's, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm that guy. Whereas Charlie Bowie is a beer aficionado. He loves all this stuff, but craft be, beer places are weird. Be, they are yeah. Weird. Being not they a beer are. guy. That being said, I would still try this beer. I would try a marshmallow, lucky charms flavored. I wouldn't. I mean, you'll try it. No, but I mean, I'm I wouldn't sure. even try it. You wouldn't even try uh, it. No. <laughs> look, look Let me tell you something. Consum consumption of alcohol is an adult activity. I don't want to be reviewing my childhood <laughs> when I'm fucking having a beer. You know, like that's just that a, that's just that's is? just a recipe I don't for want pedophiles. To be reminded right there. of my that's childhood. <laughs> yeah. No children near me. Okay, so we've beer. touched on some sensitive stuff. You were raped at a massage I was not parlor. Raped by a massage uh, parlor. Uh, you have some issues about drinking during your childhood, <laughs> and I led a perfect unscathed life. Uh, <laughs> No, you're in touch as an altar boy. What? <laughs> How dare you? I'm just happy to see that all this is coming out now. Did you see? Did you see just this week one of the Pope's top advisors? Yeah, the one that touched you. No. Nah, no, nah, I always got the B team. I never got the high ups. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they when when the Pope's top one of his top advisors is now taking a fall. Hey, I wanted to show you this on my Twitter. This is actually my pinned photo right here. What is it? Is that for is it you took you did that photo? That's mine. That's why I call Irish breakfast. It's a big bowl of Lucky Charms and a bottle of Jameson. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. And uh, yeah, so that's why I'm all Fine about Irish this beer flavored stuff. But um, yeah, man, that was that was kind of hard to believe. Not hard to believe. Uh, finally, the Vatican. This I love this Pope, by the way. This guy the one just, that got caught? No, no. He, oh. <laughs> it wasn't the Pope. It wasn't the Pope. Well, I hope not. Yeah, it was one of his advisors. His, his, his but you know what? Unlike Trump, unlike Trump, when this Pope when this Pope was like, "What? My advisor did what? Bam! All right, go get him." It wasn't any protecting or anything like that. It's like this Pope is pretty badass, dude. He's doing things that make people in the church go, uh, "We didn't know he was going to do that." Right. Like he's going after all these people uh, for years. Priests have been able to do shitty things to kids and just get shipped off to different churches and parishes with no legal retribution for it. And this pope is like, nah, that's fucked up. He shut down a whole he shut down a whole parish because for years it'd been reported that the priests were using the nuns there as their sex toys. But nobody would look into it. Nobody would investigate it. When our Pope now was actually not the Pope, part of his job was going around looking into sexual misconduct allegations. And when he went to look into that parish, he was told to back off. So now that he's the Pope, he's like, yeah, fuck you guys. But seriously, man, uh, there's it's rampant in the church. Why are any of these guys 
why would you have faith in a church like that anymore? Are you religious? Not at all. Are you religious? Yeah, a little bit. But okay. That's, it's not my fault. So are you like, <laughs> wait, wait, what's not your fault? Wait, what the fuck? I'm what? saying <laughs> no, I was raised Southern Baptist. You know, I, I do a joke about having been an altar boy for years and not getting touched, you know, be, and my dad's like, yeah, you know, cause, uh, those You're pretty ugly. sad standards. Yeah. You were an ugly kid, that type of thing. But honestly speaking, how can this go unchecked for so long? And I get the whole separation of church and state, but there's a difference between, how are you going to sit there and preach? Here's the Ten Commandments that thou shall not do. And these priests are like, ah, well, fucking kids isn't on the list. So technically we didn't break anything. <laughs> They're savages, man. How are you going to be a part of a church that for so long condemned gay people and homosexuals as sinners who automatically go to hell? And you're out there giving that lecture and then you're in the back getting hand jobs from altar boys. You know, it's kind of hypocritical. When are you going to run for mayor? Me? <laughs> I got too many dick pics out there. I can't. I got too much shitty stuff in my past, man. So so passionate when it comes to this shit, bro. It just pisses me off, dude. It pisses me I hate people who do shitty things to kids, but I especially hate people who go around pretending to be holier than thou while they do shitty things. Like, if you're going to be a dick, be a fucking dick. I know what to expect from you. Right. But if you're going to run around pretending like you're a good person yeah. and then be a dick in the background, I actually despise that. I personally, uh, I was raised Catholic. I'm not so religious now. I believe there's bigger things out there past this flat earth of ours. But then I also, <laughs> <laughs> the God who created this flat earth knows I believe him. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I, I believe there is a hell. And I believe in that hell is the fucking people like these priests who act one way and do other things. So I believe <laughs> those are the people that are going to burn. All right. I hope they burn. I hope so too. I'm with you on this one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, other than that, the only thing I had was a news story in Berlin, Germany, about <laughs> a... Just pull up every damn news story? A, <laughs> dude, no, I just went through finding stuff that I thought was fun. Uh, a, a man was shot by his dog. How the fuck? <laughs> a man was shot by his dog. This guy's in court right now because he wants his gun license back. And the courts are like, we, we don't feel like we can in good conscience give you a gun jail? license. How does a dog fire a weapon? Yeah, that uh, dog's gangster. <laughs> no, man. That dog he just blood. got that paw up in there. And was like, what, what? It must have been a pit bull. You know they're the most violent of all the breeds. That was a chihuahua. It yeah. was a Rottweiler. Yeah, like, so the, so the horse pulling the trigger is one thing. It made some gang signs before it did with its paw. Pulling the um, is one thing. What about aiming? So How does he aim? A German this court. Blind luck. A German court has ruled that a dog owner isn't fit to carry a firearms license probably not fit to have a dog either yeah. after his dog shot him with a rifle the munich administration court on tuesday dismissed the man's appeal against an earlier decision by bavarian authorities to withdraw his license to own a rifle <laughs> as well as his hunting permit the decision followed a 2016 incident in which the man a passionate hunter was shot in the arm after his dog managed to release the trigger on a loaded rifle that was lying in his car the court ruled the hunter couldn't be relied upon because it must be assumed that he will handle firearms and ammunition cares carelessly in future as well. The man whose name wasn't released can appeal the verdict. What an effing weirdo. So basically, this dude was going hunting with his dog, had the rifle in the car, and somehow the rifle was positioned in such a way Facing him. that the dog was able to get its little paw into the, yeah, into got, the trigger. Stuck and he, he, yanked it. <laughs> he yanked it, shot him in the arm. He's Man's best friend, him. my fucking ass. He's lucky he shot him in the arm, dumbass. <laughs> Man, do you think it really was the dog? Or you think this guy did something stupid? Had to go to a hospital. Didn't want to admit he shot himself with his own fucking gun while Where cleaning. Where was that it. again? Berlin, Germany. Oh yeah, you know it makes sense. Yeah. Fucking Germany, man. They're fucking mean. Everyone's mean over there. <laughs> fucking dogs are mean. Cats are mean. Humans Look, are you've mean. seen Schindler's List like half of it once, and now you know everything about Germany. I know enough. Yeah. I know enough. They're That's how people. I feel about Flat Earth. I watch half a documentary. I know what's up. I know what's up. I'm done with that shit. <laughs> yeah, that dog's an asshole, too. Mm -hmm. Just like the owner. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, your boy... Uh, what else happened this week? Uh, your boy Ja Rule. <laughs> Ja Rule made the news. He's that guy's a, had no luck. What was it? A couple a of months dork. ago, didn't 50 cents buy out like the front? His front row of his concert. Front, like few rows. So it was just emptiness in the front. Yeah. So, because they got a beef that goes way back or something, right? Yeah, so I don't know what the hell their problem Okay, so what's up with Ja Rule now? And then he did the whole uh, Fry Festival, Fire Festival. That was Ja Rule, mm -hmm. right? And that was a shit show. Was shit did you watch that documentary? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Did you watch that yet? No, what is it? No, oh, man. We have to re. Let's try to do it without getting too detailed. It's pretty much guys in Ja Rule got a, uh, made a festival in the Bahamas. 
and they flew a bunch of people out. Well, they didn't fly, but they made, they had, they made a bunch of people pay for things. Like high price. Have. They got all these Instagram models to like post, oh, this is going to be the hottest thing I've ever. And then all these rich kids bought all these tickets to go out to the Bahamas, party up, you know, on this private island, which was owned by who? Oh, it was um, El Chapo. The original island was owned Pablo, by Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar. Uh, the original island was owned by Pablo Escobar. And they said, we'll lease you the island as long as you don't mention our name in the advertising. And then the very first advertising, come party on Pablo Escobar's private. <laughs> so they're like, you yeah. need to find another fucking island. They're going to kill him. But anyways, yeah, yeah. They, they promoted it, sold tickets at Ridiculous, all these showed pictures of these beautiful bungalows and all these bands that were going to be playing. But they didn't have any of they the infrastructure shit. to do Nothing it. They didn't there. have sewage. They didn't have electricity. So basically, up until the day of, they were putting this all together in like a four-month period. And they had these bungalows. When people started showing up, they had these bungalows that were actually the tents from FEMA, from like Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. Katrina. Oh. And like... They showed pictures of it was supposed to be all catered and everything. People were getting a slice of bread, a slice of cheese, and a ball. It was like prison meals. It was like Survivor, man. Yeah, and there was survivor. no way to get off the <laughs> like island. They survivor. couldn't deal with it. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. just this huge flop, but Ja Rule was a big, he was he a partner a part in it. it. They're all yeah. out there so, shooting in the sand. It's like, what? So what happened? He had some, it, was this a concert he did? Or so what was it? His asshole got hired for the halftime show at the Bucks game. Okay. And uh, this is what happened. They said this is 90s night. So they brought out a 2,000 artist. <laughs> but my album came out in 99, so I guess that counts. Yeah, Santa yeah it does. We ready? Mm -hmm. Here at 90s. We ready? Are we ready? ready? <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> so, what an asshole. So people who didn't see the video, Ja Rule is doing like the halftime show at this Bucks game or something. Is that what's going yeah, on? It's the halftime show. And he goes out there, and the first thing he does is, I guess they're doing like a theme night, like a lot of sports places yeah. do. So they're like doing 90s night. And he's like, man, it's 90s night, so they're bringing out a 2,000 artist. And then nobody responds no from the looks of this video. No one cares. And then he's like, well, my album did drop in 99. So I guess, tech yeah, that's why you're there, dude. These other people signed the check. But more importantly, you're playing halftime at a fucking Bucks game. Be thankful you're getting he paid. Was, he was playing his music. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bucks team came out and started shooting uh, free throws for the warm up during, during uh, his performance. So what happened here is so he was going to sing along to a track or something. And the sound guy didn't have it queued up or ready to His go. DJ wasn't ready. It just he's so he tried playing it off and right. Which having done having done comedy magic, a lot of times I do stuff to music, and I've been there where you get there early to the venue, you go over shit with the sound guy, you test it, and then when it comes time for that music cue, that music's not there. Yeah, and you got to fucking pull a jaw rule and be like, "We good? <laughs> we good?" And then if it's not, you fucking need to muscle on anyways. And guess what? You do it a cappella. You don't do music. Yeah. Cue. yeah. No, but, I've seen that several times, like where like professional magicians will be on stage and their sound just goes out. That's why I've always and preferred. You just have to barrel through it. Man. Yeah. No shit. I've always preferred to control it by myself, like have some way of operating on stage where I can do my own cue or, you know, I have my opening act do the music for me or something. But that being said, you can do as many sound checks as you want. I can still recall dozens of times when even doing the sound check beforehand all it takes is someone comes in switches one thing on the soundboard or something for another act or changes and all of a sudden your shit doesn't work i've had it where everything works perfectly until you go to press play and then nothing works yeah, yeah. When, it, when it comes to magic i always have verbal patter mm -hmm. that you can for, replace for, it with that i can replace it with if the sound goes out mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's the safest bet you know? so poor ja rule his his streak fire fest and 50 cent and now the bucks game fiasco poor poor general poor poor general and uh how, how's it going i know we talked about your uh your buddy robert Kraft for a while the pat's yeah. owner uh my buddy I'm so even, did they I'm not even a pat's fan. did they arrest him like did Texan. they did they nah, actually it's like, a, it's like a slap on a wrist man. yeah he'll walk away from all this because wrong. i guess sort of. I, I, mean, I guess the big thing is they're trying they found out that the place he went to is linked to sex slave trade right so now it's almost like uh he did well, well yeah, not enough for them to get out of their slavery, but uh, I mean, he gave a, he tipped enough where they could sleep on a nice bed yeah. that night. But what's going on with your what's going on with your boy 80, R. Kelly? Eighty bucks. Who? What's going on with your boy R. Kelly? He's free. 
He's free at last. <laughs> He's free. What happened with it? Yeah, so the, the documentary, I still haven't watched the documentary, Surviving either. R. Kelly. But then his label dropped him right after that. Right. And then everybody's been uh, running after him. But then I guess he was actually charged with shit earlier this week, right? I mean, he's been charged with a lot of shit, man. But, I mean, they, they came out with, like, 70 counts or seven counts. There's a seven in there somewhere, right? Mm, yeah. Let me see. Ba, 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 ba. So they arrested him. And ten, ten counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. And they set bail, right? He set, Well, he didn't set bail. He no, no. A, the judge set bail at? One mil. One mil, yeah. which if you, I think you got to pay 10 or 15% of that is your bail of bond. Bail fee, which would be 100,000. And he said he doesn't have 100,000? He didn't, ha- he didn't have. So uh, how'd he get out? Some. Some chick he didn't pee on? Or, yeah. Or that some likes chick, being peed on? Some chick came and, pee- <laughs> and peed. Some chick came and paid for him. $100,000 yeah, to get yeah, him yeah. out. Yo, that's, that's yeah. the power of some, uh. It's the power of good dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, holy shit. Ten hundred thousand dollars? Do you think when he was getting ballistic. out of prison, he's like, I believe I'll just fly. Yeah, dude, he's he's amazing. I mean, the problem is funny. You know what's so funny? Um, they'll mm-hmm. be like uh, the news channel be talking about like R. Kelly did this and R. Kelly does that. Mm-hmm. And then like they'll play this song when they're playing with it, like Usually I don't do this. And he'd be like, yo, R. Kelly's out. He'd be like, all right, well, that's, he's, he's, he's a monster. He just got, but damn, that beat. <laughs> <laughs> that beat is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, you can't play this music where you're talking about him. I didn't, I didn't know this till recently. He, yeah, like he had a, he's had his hits and everything, but he's written for so many people. Like, He's actually written oh, songs. Yes. For, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Kind of like Rob Thomas from Matchbox 20 has actually written songs for so many mm-hmm. different artists. I didn't know. You know, I didn't know he was like that. I didn't know he was that yeah. talented. That so I'm sure there's a ton of people like artists who had hits with him out there going, "We don't appreciate what I did, but I'm still gonna be taking the royalties off I mean, that song." A lot of people he was like friends with, and they're just staying quiet, like Jay Z and Beyonce. Like they all knew, and no one said anything. I don't think they knew. They just like they're just like uh, kind of like looking the other way. Didn't he <laughs> marry uh, what was her name, Ilya, when she was like? When she, I mean, hell, they had a song she was talking about fifteen or nothing but a number. Yeah. I think because she was his, but a number? Yeah. she was his was pro- song. I think she was his protege when she was fifteen, and he was like twenty eight or something. Some shit like that. But I mean, is is everyone knew about this? That's why I find it funny. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, now you're going after him. But that's that's what we live in. Good. How you feel about that, man? How you feel about people being called to task for things that happened like twenty, thirty years ago? Now, um, I I, I I'm all for it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because it's it's uh. They gotta speak out, speak up, because mm-hmm. that's a problem. Everyone stays quiet about it, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. It just. It just. I find it weird that they all of a sudden it's, it's like it goes from one person, then all of a sudden it's like thirty people, and it's like whoa, why, why, why all of a sudden it's thirty people? Like who's telling the truth here? And then like there's always he says, she says. So it's, right. It gets into that weird kind of like who do you believe and like where do you go and like without the proof. Oh, I I kind of feel like like we were just talking about priests. You know, I'm glad to see, <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm glad to see people are starting to pay for the things they right. did. However, is it's one of those things where it's it's like if you file a false conviction and they've already had so many of these where they've proven that it was just false, just people right. which takes away from the people who, who have real were really bad things, horrible done to them. And then you find this false conviction and all of a sudden it gives fodder to the people that are like, see, everybody's making everything up. Kind of like that Jesse Smollett shit that happened. You yeah. know, like you didn't have to manufacture a racial hatred attack. There's plenty of that that goes on. But because you manufactured that one and now they can prove you manufactured it, you've given fuel to everybody who's always said, see, it's all fake and made up and fake news. Like you did so much harm by paying two guys to beat you up and pretend they were like Trump supporters, yeah, yeah. you know. But and, by the way, he hired two of the biggest black guys from Nigeria to beat him up. Yeah, hire skinny white dudes. Are yeah, you, like hire the guys who were gonna do it for free anyway. <laughs> Those guys were humongous. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, this week's been weird. What do you mean? There's like a lot of like weird sex shit. <laughs> I just noticed that. How so? Robert Kraft. Yeah, Robert that wasn't Kraft. us. I'm not saying us. Mm-hmm. R. Kelly, mm-hmm. the priest shit. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the priest shit is every week, dude. But like you just said, in, he recently got busted. Well, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that, that's because they've been cracking down on it throughout the... Uh, yeah. Like, it's coming down from the Vatican now. That's, that's it will not be tolerated. 
which kind of makes it weird because it's like, so that's basically saying the message for the past how many hundred years was, eh, <laughs> eh. eh. you know, we told you you couldn't, I think that's the biggest problem. It's like you told the priests they can't have relations with women and get married and everything else, and then you're surprised when you find out that they're just human beings who are out there doing this crap. Right. You know? mm -hmm. It's like there's a lot of religions where, like, the pastors can have wives, like pastors' wives, and they can have families which and everything it else. Should be. Which is exactly how it should be. Like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> like, even Jesus himself was supposedly hooking up with that Mary Magdalene chick, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming. I don't yeah. I ain't getting pissed off a bunch of people with that shit. I ain't I'm about. just going by what Tom Hanks said in The Da Vinci Code. <laughs> all right? And if that's not based on... Yeah, well, The Da Vinci Code was based on the book, The Da Vinci Code. I was say, isn't based and on your religion book? is also based on a book. So I think it all balances out. It's all one big circle. It's all, yeah, like a book Earth. written by men. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta lighten this up. I see what you did up. there. I see what I did there with yeah. the flat earth shit. So, just, just for the sake of closing this out, did we go to the moon? I don't know. Is the earth flat? No. Okay. Did we go to the moon? Yes. Oh. Can't trust this guy. Is the earth flat? No. That's exactly what someone who thinks we went to the moon would say. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to end this. Uh, I found this video. I found this video. From, uh, no. Oh, before we do that, yeah. uh, one time for Robbie Moreland singing in with us. Yeah, thank you yeah, so yeah, much, man. No problem, guys. Thank appreciate you. appreciate it. you coming on. I Definitely. wish I was more to y'all's speed as far as comedy, man. You guys no, you're are good, bro. No, you're, you're <laughs> you the perfect amount. Band. That's one of the things I love about hanging out with you guys, though, is, is the fact that you guys can just riff. You like, played you the know? just right amount of politics. You sided with him on a certain number of things. You sided with me on a certain... <laughs> you came off very likable. But uh, check out Robbie Moreland uh, every Wednesday night, Sluice Dinner Theater on iDrive, 6 o'clock. Also, uh, look for him if you're into magic. Uh, go pull up his name, and you'll see a ton of stuff. He has a couple of DVDs where he teaches some of the... And subtle nuances of and yeah and book him of yep. course he's amazing I do private events as well so yeah go. uh i did we did new year's eve they hired me at the uh uh lpga a couple of years back and robbie was booked just as like a kind of hang out in the lounge and do magic and uh, I was the headliner for the evening, but you wouldn't know it because everybody walked away from the place. Did you see the guy doing that? Oh, yeah. yeah. They loved him, dude. It was ridiculous. I got a few private events coming up here pretty soon. I'm doing uh, Howl at the Moon for the first time. Okay, oh, cool. Nice. That's going to be kind of cool. Right down the road from them, probably. But it's a private event, so unfortunately nobody's allowed. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you get invited to a mansion, I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit, all this crazy talk, but thank you again for coming in. I'm going to get you guys a natural reaction. I found this video. Oh, it's going to have poop. Stay with me. <laughs> All right. I found this video off another podcast uh, with Tom Segura, mm -hmm. and they play this. <laughs> and uh, I'll get you guys natural reaction. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. How did I know? Just, just before, before, <laughs> you know what? That's good. They're already blurring shit out. Literally blurring shit. <laughs> this is from Tom Segura's podcast? Yes. Right. Okay, so I see a chocolate fountain and... Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Why? Why? All right, just for those listening, this is all done in slow motion. There's a chocolate fondue fountain, a, a plastic baby doll on one side, and a bare ass on the other side. And when the ass farts, it shoots the... Molten chocolate across the plastic baby. baby. <laughs> across the ether into the baby's face. And it's in slow motion, so the audio of the fart is like... Are you peeing yourself over there? How did I know before you turned it around it was going to be something like this? It's on YouTube. You guys can go. How do you even find this shit? Uh, what do you spend your days doing? Yes, Sanchez have a lot of time. Oh my god. Oh, and you got another fart video all no, queued no, no, up, ready? Oh yeah, yeah. I, this I is a whole stream of fart videos. Uh, I don't know what that is. I, just, just. Okay. Well, thank you. We we had a very quality show discussing such real things as flat Earth <laughs> and molestation in the Catholic Church, and we 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 were even classy with a red carpet review of the Oscars. And then you just decide to fucking close it. We had Robert Moreland, one of the classiest performers I know in here. And you just, you shit it all away with that last video that we will have a link to on our Facebook page. You know what's funny about that video? If you, got, you guys are not looking at the, the craziness. It's like a performance. There's like people in the background mm -hmm. and like there's a champagne bottle. <laughs> it's a whole 
thing. Yeah, man. And it's just. He's handing out some of that that Christmas cheer. Dude, do you think they're like, hey, anyone else going to use the fondue? There is no using that fondue. Because we're about to do they, something. No, it just <laughs> recirculates again. Anyone so, else? No. Uh, That's great because it camouflages. There's, you, you know, know farts have, have like you know? feces particles in it, right? You know, that's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's disgusting. It makes no sense. That's like an ass sneeze. You know that. There's germs all through there. Uh, but That's why, a waste of chocolate. But, but why the baby? And who picked up the baby doll? Who went to Toys R Us that day and said, we need this for this bit later? Why, and then why the slowing down? Because you don't want to miss it. Yeah, you're even, <laughs> like, even the sound is slowed down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> if someone says something. <laughs> all right. This has been episode 54 of the... Obla- I'm, I'm, listeners, I am disgusted for you, okay? I apologize, kind of. All right. So until next time, this has been Mike Hurley. I'm Kurt. Robbie Morland. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. I'll Bye-bye. See you guys later.